what we're looking at today is uh, the first activity which is Photoshop okay we look at task AG1 now this uh, you'll get used to after a while uh, what we have to do is to set this up and this is where we put all our work so first off we're gonna do this uh, the part in this gray box so the first thing is to open up a new document using our word processing software which in this case is Microsoft Word and we're going to enter task AG1 and your name uh, in the footer of the document and then we're going to save it as task AG1 once you have your word document open you can go to insert you have an option of header and footer so we're going to insert a footer and it's always easier to use this uh, blank three columns so the first thing you're going to do is type in here task AG1 uh, your name and we just pop four zeros here for the center number as we don't know it yet okay next we're going to close the header and footer and have a look at the next question next what we need to do is to open our art and graphics software which in this case is Adobe Photoshop we're going to open the graphic file logo which we have done here okay once you've got everything open you can then follow on with the questions so the first question it says Fiona wants some changes made to the design so the first part is we're going to crop the image so that the green area is removed the tool we use for cropping is on the side here okay the crop tool so this is the one we use for cropping if you don't see it uh, it might show something like this, you just right click and then you should be able to go back to your crop tool. <clears throat> okay, now what we can do is, if we hold down the control button, tap the minus and plus, we can zoom in and zoom out. This will make it a lot easier for us uh, to find our cropping points. Okay, so we can crop a bit wide. And then if we want to, we can zoom in and fine tune crops just so we don't take too much of the brown out okay double click in the center to accept the crop part two we're going to change the text by replacing a and p to f and j so we got to get rid of this a and p now there are two ways the first one i'm going to show you is using the paintbrush now again to reduce the size of the paintbrush we use the square brackets which is less than letter p the left square bracket to reduce the size and the right square bracket to increase the size now to select the color we go to our color tool which is down here and we want the exact color now we can't guess the exact color so what we can do in this case is actually click on the color itself and when we click on the color it will select the exact color that we need for this so we need the background of the book okay uh, make sure that your brush okay we, you can use a hard brush or a soft brush okay if you see the soft brush is an example and then the hard brush like so okay so we need to get rid of the letter A and P okay next we need to replace this with the letters F and J so to do this we need to add text to add text we use this T tool the letter T and then we just click on our page like so and we're going to change this letter F and J uh, as you can see it's chosen a brown color we need to highlight the letter and change it back to black so we can choose our tool here and change it back to black now it's a bit too small we need to get the perspective right so again we can select by clicking and highlighting we can select the letter F and we can actually change the size uh, to something more suitable okay now we need to move it in place by using this tool here which is the move tool make sure the letter F is selected click on our move tool and we can move it in place now to rotate it slightly we need to go to edit make sure the letter F is selected transform rotate and that allows us to drag the letter F and rotate it in place like so just double click in the box uh, to set it like so next we need to add the letter J to add the letter J we can actually duplicate the letter F because it's already rotated it's the right size so to duplicate this layer F 
we take it and we drag it down next to the dustbin to duplicate the layer and you will see it appear as F copy now what it's done is it's made a copy we can't see it yet but if we go to our move tool click on F copy we can drag it across okay and we just want to change it to letter J so we go back to our text tool and we should be able to select it change it to the letter J now we just click on our move tool here just to fine tune make sure it's where we want it to be and that is question two completed now question number three we need to change the color of the background of the logo from brown to pale blue so to do this the first thing we need to do is to select the background for this we use our magic wand click on our magic wand again if it shows you the quick selection tool you will need to right click your mouse to go back to the magic wand make sure your tolerance is set to number 32 which is the default value and what that allows us to do is to click anywhere on here and it will select a specific color but before we do this you need to make sure you're clicked on the background when you click on the background you can see what we call the marching ants it goes around the same color if I was to click on this yellow box it will just highlight the yellow box so to edit the background we need to double click on this padlock and select OK for layer 0 now we can edit this background first thing I'm going to do is use the paintbrush we can paint this using our paintbrush here again make sure you've got the right kind of brush and we need to select our color which is pale blue so if we go to pale blue okay now what I don't want is to see it coloring like this because it will take a long time so what you can do is use your square brackets next letter P to increase the size of the brush like so okay you can also if you feel more confident is to uh, by freehand but this part here is quite difficult which is why we use the magic wand so we go back to our magic wand and we select the brown area which allows us to paint everything around that selection uh, once you've done that you can then go ahead and tidy up the outline like so and that is part three completed we want to replace the text Peta News with Theo Johns. Use a sans serif font, example Arial. Sans serif means without curves in French, so you need to use a very basic font. Okay, Arial, and it's going to be in dark blue. So we go to our Photoshop, use our text tool and we choose Arial type in Theo Johns now the reason you can't see it is because the color is the same as the background currently set so we can use our tool to reset the colors back to black or we can change the color by selecting like so if you click on this option here it will default the colors back to black and white so we can use our move tool to move it in place like so if it's not the right size you can go back to the text tool and you can highlight and you can change the size now if it's a size you want that's not on this list if we want 65 we can manually type in 65 like so or even we can go to 655 okay All right so we're going to position this one in like so okay good now just to show you how layers work if I was to click on the letter F and do the same thing, it would just be the letter F moving. Okay, the letter J. And if you were to select all three of them, you can move all three together. Okay, that is question four completed. Final question, draw a thin black border around the logo. For this, we need to use our blending options. So we go to our layer. We right click the mouse button and we select blending options. From this box, what we're going to do is select something called stroke. You click on the stroke option and it comes up with a dialog box like so. Now the position is set as default to outside, but if we draw outside this, we won't be able to see the border. So we need to change this to inside. 
Uh, just to give you, I'm going to change the color just to share how it works. If we were to change it to a, a yellow color, you can see the border is like so, yellow. And if you wanted to increase the size of the border and decrease, just change the size. Once that's done, select OK, and you have finished. To import the graphic logo in Task AG1, which is the Word document we created, it should occupy the full width of the page between the margins. So to do this, we need to save it as a JPEG file. So we go to File, Save As, and we select JPEG. There are three options. The one we want is not JPEG Stereo, JPEG 2000, but the one at the top, JPG, JPEG. And I'm going to save it to desktop. I'm going to call it logo and click on save. Uh, if you get this dialog box come up, let's choose it as a maximum file and select OK. Now we go back to our Word document right at the beginning and we had our footer there and we go to insert picture and we save the picture on the desktop. So we go over to our desktop and double click. Now they want it for the full width of the page. A lot of people tend to drag across like this, but they forget that there are margins on both sides. So to drag it within the margins, we need to leave a space for the margins. And that is the question completed.